there, good looking. Join me for this total body strength workout using only one dumbbell. And listen up, we're also gonna get that heart rate up. So all you need is one dumbbell, a moderate, or if you're advanced to heavy, for reference, I'm using a 20 pound dumbbell. Now we'll also be down on the mat for a couple of the exercises. So heads up, if you are on a hard surface, maybe grab a mat as well. All right, let's get started. All right, we are gonna get busy. Now, before we get started, some of you do wear fitness watches. I recommend the HIT setting or something similar, depending on what your um, watch is, because like I mentioned in the intro, we are gonna get the heart rate up. All right, let's start down on all fours, just warming up the back and working our way up into standing. Fingers spread, wrists under shoulders, knees apart under hips. Allow the inhalation to come into the body while we let the low back drop and the head look up. Good. Exhale, push away. Inhale. And work through a range of motion that feels best for your back. Last two. And neutral spine. Left hand behind the ear, bring that left elbow to right elbow, and then rotate and look up, warming up into the shoulder and thoracic spine. We have six. You're really trying to point that elbow up to the ceiling. Last two. One more. Awesome. Other side. Here we go. And rotate. You may find one side can move a little easier. These are all little cool things we learn about our body as we exercise and then what we can focus on for future exercise sessions. Last two, one more. Excellent, bring yourself into high plank for me, fingers spread so we're not just resting on the wrist joint. We've got those fingers spread and gripping into the mat so we have some strength in the hand. Now step or walk the left foot right beside the pinky. Good, now bring that left elbow as close to the ground as you can and rotate and look up. Good. Back leg is straight, pressing through that back heel. Two more. One more. Let's step it back into high plank. Right foot beside right pinky, and you may have to walk it forward or grab it with that right hand, or you can step it right in. Here we go, let's take that right elbow, trying to bring it as close to the ground as we can. Look up, reach up, good. So this hand that's on the ground, it's kicked out a little bit, it's not directly underneath my shoulder. Two more. One more. Good job. Now let's go to high plank again. Now if you're able to, I want you to do a walk out. If you're not, just stand, but a walk out, soften the knees, walk your hands towards the hands, and use your legs to stand on up. Beautiful, take the feet apart for me, interlace the hands, swing the hands through the body, and then use the hips to get the arms up. So this is gonna be, we're gonna start out our workout with a Tabata before we move into the strength. We are performing a wood chop. So what we're trying to learn here is a hip hinge, and then we're using the hips to drive the hands up. So we'll be using a heavy dumbbell, or whatever dumbbell you have. <laughs> and we're, however, if it doesn't work for you, you can use what we're doing right here with the hands. Good, last two, last one. Excellent, hands light behind the ears, feet out, toes turned out. Let's get in some squats before we get going. So we start with the Tabata. We have two different exercises, 20 seconds of work, 10 second break. Good, let's do two more here. One more, and shake it out. All right, you got 20 seconds if you wanna grab a sip of water, now's your time. Otherwise, I want you to pick up that dumbbell that you have. For those of you with shoulder issues, you'll hold your dumbbell here. Everybody else, dumbbell up. Now draw the belly button in towards the spine, shoulders away from the ears, and march the knees up, and go. So, arms up marches. Working a lot into the core here. We have 20 seconds of work. You should feel those abs really fired up too. It's quite cool how effective this exercise is. In three, two, 
One, dumbbell down. Now we're gonna hold the pose and get those wood chops in that we learned in the warm up. So feet shoulder width or wider, toes turned out. We swing, we use the hips to get the dumbbell up there. So as a hip hinge, there should be nothing in your low back. Good. And then if this feels comfortable for you, you can turn it into an American kettlebell swing and bring the arms right up. Quite advanced, so you choose what's gonna work best for you. One more. And time, okay? So you go to shoulder height or above. Let's go back to arms up marches. Here if your shoulders are bugging you, and let's go, march it. Zip up through that spine, good. Shoulders down, march it out. Pick up the tempo if you can. And down, okay. So hold on to the post to your dumbbell, or if you have a kettlebell, grab that. Um, maybe a little late to the party with that info, sorry. <laughs> Here we go, swing. We go to shoulder height. That feels good, and you want to increase the intensity, you bring it up. Elbows are soft. Now it's super important that you know that this is coming through the hips, not the shoulders. Wood chop is a core hip movement, not a shoulder movement. Time. The shoulders are only moving due to those hips and that core activating the movement. All right, we're halfway. Get the dumbbell up there, shoulders away from ears. March it out. We want high knees, chest lifted, and down. All right, back to those wood chops. We'll start out with the Russian, so let's go into shoulder height, and then we can build up if you'd like. Ready, use the hips, swing it through. Good, breathe, it feels good. Hup. So see the side view here. It's really a hip hinge. Slight knee bend, and then I drive through the heels and hips. One more, excellent, all right. One more of each, we'll grab a sip of water and move into our strength. Here we go, ready, set, smiles on, and let's go, march it. Try to keep those arms fairly straight. Three, two, one, and wood chop it. All right, grab onto the post. Toes are turned out, feet are shoulder width or maybe a tad wider. Swing through, hip drive. Get that dumbbell up and all the way if that feels good for you. So my heels almost do lift off as I drive up. One more. Woo. All right, grab a sip of water. March it out if you have to. Okay, we're moving into our strength portion once we have that little water break. All right, grab your water. I'm gonna start the timer. That only gives us 10 seconds to get ourselves set up. Our setup is a dumbbell into a goblet and bringing it down into a squat, okay? So I'm pushing the timer. So goblet style means you're holding on to the top end. Feet out, toes turned out. Nice and tall on the spine. Now push your bum rearward like you're gonna sit in a chair and then drive up. So it's like your bum's trying to seek out a chair that's there. And that's gonna make sure that you hinge through the hips and you don't anteriorly or posteriorly tilt too much into that pelvis, keeping that low back of yours healthy. Now advanced people, I want you to come all the way down, elbows touching the tops of your thighs or maybe a bit lower. But again, always play with what feels best for the knee joint. Once we've completed this, we'll take ourselves down onto the ground, lift up through the hips so we work the glutes and then get an upper body exercise in at the same time. Slow and controlled here. You're gonna feel the heat in those thighs. One more. All right, let's take ourselves down to the ground. 
hold on to the dumbbell on each end, and it's resting just above the upper abdomen. Push the hips up, press the dumbbell straight up for chest press and lower. Think about exhaling as you press up. That's the hard part, pressing the weight up against gravity. And then don't forget, push through those heels, squeeze the tush so we get into the glutes and the low back. So this whole strength series is 45 seconds of work and we have five rounds. <laughs> so we are building some muscle today. There are a couple, this being one of them, where we have to be down on the ground. My apologies. We can't be all standing for every exercise due to the nature of hitting the right muscles. Slow and controlled, straighten the arms completely and then bring those arms all the way down so they hit your mat. Lower the tush and let's get back into that standing position. Now, feet are hip width, knees are soft. We're gonna hold on to that dumbbell just like we were earlier. Hip hinge for me and now row the dumbbell up towards the upper abdomen and release. So you really want a beautiful long spine, hinging through that hip, not rounding in that spine. Pulling the dumbbell up, and as we do, elbows are brushing by the rib cage slightly, squeezing the shoulder blades, and then straightening. So when the arms are straight, make sure the shoulders don't roll forward. I see that happen sometimes. And breathe. <laughs> don't forget about that breath. Now you may feel your low back fatigue, and that's normal in this position, but we don't want any pain. If there's pain, stand on up. Get yourself set up again and retry with a different form. One more. All right, standing. Let's hold on to that dumbbell goblet style again. So that means we're holding on to the top, resting it close to the body. Feet are still hip width. We haven't changed that. Step back with your left leg. Come down as low as it feels comfortable. Drive up. Step back with the right leg. So alternating reverse lunge. Now, if you have sensitive knees, I'm gonna cue you to kind of hinge forward a little bit from the hip, and that'll put a little bit more emphasis on your glutes, and you might feel less on the knee joint. I'm coming down to the knee touching the mat because lunges don't bug my knees. You take it as low as it feels good for you. It might even be a slight tap back, but if it is, try that hinge forward a bit. That might help, okay? Keeping those feet hip width apart, even when you step back, that's gonna give you some base of support there. Let's do one more here, and stand. All right, holding on to the dumbbell. This one's gonna to be tough, <laughs> I'm not gonna lie. Let's do a bicep curl, so join me. Curl up towards the chest, now press up. Now, if pressing above the shoulder bothers the shoulders or neck, don't do it, just do the curls. Now our knees are soft, belly button's drawn in, activating that deep core muscle. We're moving into our final exercise in about 15 seconds. We're gonna take it into a high plank. Let's do one more here. Finish it nice and slow and release. All right, take the dumbbell and place it in the outside of your mat just behind your left wrist. Fingers are spread, wrists under shoulders. Start on the knees for me. Drop the hips, now pick the dumbbell up with the opposite hand, pick it up and place it behind the right wrist or just the outside of the right side of your mat and then the left. So I want you to pick the dumbbell up, opposite hand, place it to the other side. Keep the hips down while you do this. Now, if this feels cool for you, you want to increase the intensity, feet apart, come off the knees, high plank, and go. So, on the knees, if you have sensitivity in the shoulders or neck, or if you're just starting out with your fitness, everybody else, get off those knees. <laughs> yeah, I'm talking to you. <laughs> so this is our last exercise. We take it back to the top for round two in about 10 seconds. One more, all right, stand on up. Remember the first exercise? 
<laughs> don't worry. <laughs> I got it written down. <laughs> Goblet squat. So bring it close to the body. Feet shoulder width are slightly wider. Toes turned out. Come down. Bum seeking out that chair that's not there. Sinking down maybe a bit lower, right? It's our second set. Knees are warmer. Hips are warmer. You're getting in the groove of it. And we're keeping that dumbbell close to the body. And then gaze, if you're not too close to a wall, take one just away from you and stare where the, take a look at where the ceiling and the wall meet. That's gonna help us keep that neck positioning. Quite often people will look down and then that just knocks your entire spine out. So let's start from the top all the way down. When we stand, push through the heels, straighten those legs and time. All right, taking it into that bridge for the chest press. But because we're awesome, right? We're bridging up high, working into those glutes and low back extensors, dumbbell in each hand and press up with the end of the dumbbell in each hand. Straighten the arms completely. Get the back of the upper arms to come all the way down, touching your mat. Exhale, as you press up. We're standing for our next exercise. Don't let those hips drop. Push through those heels. Come on. All right. Here we go. Let's get standing. So that worked your chest muscles. Now we're doing the row, working the opposing muscles. So we work every muscle on this workout. Feet are now hip width. Hip hinge. Pull up. Look slightly ahead, squeeze those shoulder blades. We've got that spine aligned, pulling just in the upper belly there. Don't go too fast with your wrap. Think quality of the movement. Here, really feeling your lower back support and stabilize and kick in your mid-back muscles as the shoulder blades draw together, and your shoulders and your biceps as you pull up and release down. Two more here. Last one. And stand. All right, goblet reverse lunge. So hold on to that dumbbell there. Remember with our lunge, we wanna keep the feet hip width and then step back hip width. That's gonna help you with your balance. Three, two, one, take it as deep as it feels comfortable to the knees, drive up, other leg. One more wrap. All right. Bicep curl, the shoulder press. Again, getting rid of the press if that just doesn't feel good for you. Feet may be a bit wider than what we had them in for our lunge. Curl up to the shoulders, press up and lower down. Let's go. Tighten up the core, especially as you press up. So we're not allowing that low back to really curve. And some of that could be due to that mid back, that thoracic spine being tight on you, which is one reason we did two different warm up drills at the beginning, so that we can easily press up, allowing or making sure that the thoracic spine extends and we don't take the movement out of the low back. It doesn't feel good when it's out of the low back. High plank coming up in less than 10 seconds. Let's do one more. All right, so dumbbells 
behind and just outside the mat on your left side. So let's start with the left side. Okay. On the knees if you need to. And then drop the hips so you're in that modified plank. Everybody else, tuck the toes under. And now right hand picks the dumbbell up. So you want to pick it up. You're not dragging it. You're picking, placing. Opposite hand. Last few reps, moving back into that goblet squat in three, two, one, and up. All right, I'm grabbing a quick sip of water. So goblet squat, get the feet position, shoulder width or a little wider, toes turned out, dumbbell up, ready, set, and go. Had to wet my whistle. Knees track with toes, take a peek. Yeah, good. Moving into that bridge down on the mat in 10 seconds. Keep those eyes where the ceiling and the wall meet, that neck positioning, and pushing that booty rearward, looking for that chair. Time that's never gonna be there. All right, chest press, let's take it down. Heels, hip width, and close to the butt. Start by bridging. You're holding on to each end of your dumbbell and press straight up and lower. So if you're doing this workout in real time, it's my 53rd birthday next week. And I mentioned that to somebody the other day and they freaked out that I was going to be 53, which can be a compliment, yes. But then you also think to yourself, wow, is 53 really old? <laughs> she was in her 20s, but <laughs> 53 is old, isn't it, when you're in your 20s? <laughs> Maybe you've had similar experience. They're kind of off-handed compliments. <sighs> and lower down and stand. So now we're working into the rows. I don't know how 53 happened. Just kind of woke up and here I am. <laughs> Push the bum back and row. For those of you that are in your 40s, maybe you'll experience when you get into your 50s what I have. And maybe those of you who are 50 plus can agree with me. Your mindset really does change for the better. I don't know if you struggled with trying to love yourself, love the body you're in, love the person you are, not try to change her. Well, I struggled for many, many years with that, and it wasn't until my 50s till I finally got it. <laughs> I am lovable. I can love myself. <laughs> One more. Whew. All right, reverse lunge. That doesn't mean that I'm not always looking at ways to improve and be a better version of myself, but finally in my 50s, I like who I am. Here we go, step back, down. So if you're struggling, hang in there. And if you are struggling, you're doing the right thing, moving your body. You're taking control of a situation and doing the best you can. That's something that you need to be proud of. A lot of people complain about the situations they're in. And then, pardon my French, they do fuck all to help it. <laughs> so don't be a victim in your own life. And if you showed up to work out, you're not. You're a fighter and I respect you. Time, all right. Curl the press. 
Here we go, shoulders back and down. This one's tough if you got the heavier dumbbell. Woo, baby. Here we go, ready? Curl and press and let's go. Knees are soft. Oh, geez, I'm so sorry. I just hit my mic and you probably just got major feedback. My apologies. Oh boy, let's get in one more. Come on, you guys, see if we can get one more rep in. High plank coming up. Time, whew. All right, so dumbbell left side, and you want it on the outside of that wrist, so it's not directly behind. Okay, and then on the knees, and opposite hand comes across. I'm trying to find the right position for my mic too, so you don't hear me breathing too much. And pick up. I had somebody really complain about that. It's like, well, sorry. I breathe, I do my best to keep it down, <laughs> but I'm working out too. Time. All right. We're almost there. I promise. Okay, that was the third round. Let's get on up. Pardon me. Goblet squat. Fourth round. Feet out. Toes turned out. Nice and tall on the spine. Drop it. And press up. So with this new outlook that I have and have had, I'm really excited actually for my 60s and my 70s. How my worldview and my thoughts <laughs> will evolve. Bridges with chest press in 10 seconds. One more. And release. All right, let's take it down. Remember, nice big hip bridge so we get those glutes fired up. Heels hip width, close to the bum. Drive the hips. Holding on the dumbbell, each end, and press. So this is hitting your pecs and your anterior deltoid in front of your shoulder and triceps. Because we have a narrow grip, you're going to be activating a little bit more into the triceps. which I focus on in a lot of my workouts because as women, we tend to be a little weaker in the back of the upper arm, which, you know, we always want to look good, you know, in our tank tops, etc. But from a functional standpoint, it's not good for the shoulders. We need that tricep strong to help support and stabilize our shoulder joint in addition to our elbow. So. All right, come on up to arm row. So yeah, you'll have nice looking arms, but from a trainer's standpoint, I'm gonna make you more functional and help injury proof your body. Here we go, hip hinge and pull. <laughs> we can come to our goals from a, an aesthetic standpoint. There is nothing wrong with that. But I will always loop in a functional goal that you'll be reaching to. So you can see how these workouts are gonna help you outside of the area of the gym area that you're working in right now. Whatever four walls you're in now, what you're doing here, is gonna translate out there in the real world. Woo, and come on up. 
you really feel start, start to feel the load in your glutes on that. Do you? Yeah. I'm waiting for you to answer me. <laughs> All right. We've got the goblet reverse lunge. Keep those feet hip width for me. Step back, come down and drive up. If you do this workout again, and I hope you do, I hope you're enjoying it and you love the multiple rounds to really get into the muscle. I recommend trying it barefoot. I released a workout where I did recommend barefoot training last month. And there were a lot of people that left comments that they really enjoyed it and have never done barefoot training. And could I do that again? <laughs> well, I could. Anytime you want to take your shoes off and work out with shoe free, go for it. As your feet get stronger, you might even be able to get away with doing the high impact in bare feet. Last two. One more, you guys. Come on, get it in. Release. All right. Now, we want curl to press. Shoulders back and down. Feet, maybe shoulder width on this one. Really giving you a good base of support. Soften the knees, tighten up in the quad. Now curl up and press up. There is something to be said about barefoot training in that it's going to strengthen that lower leg of yours, that foot, which is really cradled and comfy in our shoes. So if you don't have any underlying issues like plantar fasciitis or prone to shin splints, then give it a try every so often to strengthen the muscles of the feet and the calves. But if you have plantar fasciitis, not a good idea. <laughs> One more, keep your shoes on. All right, high plank, dumbbell pickup. So you got the knees or join me on the toes. If you've been on the knees, maybe try on the toes. Maybe two pickups, try for two pickups and then go back down on the knees. Ready and go. You never know until you give it a try. You can always go back, right? You can always tone it down, but how do you know what your limit is? Unless you start testing the water. Hips down, squeeze those glutes. I find that it really helps so that the hips don't shift too much. You don't want one hip lifting as you pick the dumbbell up. So give the glutes a squeeze. 10 more seconds. This is a really good core exercise on many levels. One more. All right, come on up. This is it, last round. Whew. Here we go, goblet squat. So feet are shoulder width or maybe a bit wider if that feels best for you. Ready, set, go. Come down, drive up, knees track with the toes, pushing the bum rearward, and then take a gaze at where the wall and the ceiling meet, just in front of you. Last few reps, moving into that bridge and chest press for the last round. Let's do one more squat. Here we go, take it down, drive up. Nicely done. Okay, let's take it down. Whew. Heels close to the bum, hip width, push through the heels, drive those hips, and now press the dumbbell up. We're standing, the next exercise, almost there. Keep those hips up, 
and release. All right. Now let's work the opposite muscle group into our mid back, our lats, our biceps, our rear delt. Whew. Feet hip width, not too wide on this guy. Push the hips back, pull up. Good. So there's my spine. You can take a peek. Notice my knees are bent too. When we have locked out knees, never good for a joint. Softness in the knees is going to mean that the muscles surrounding whatever joint is soft, those muscles are activated to protect the joint. We also have better balance with softness in the knees. If you take a look at any athlete on a field, they're never standing there with locked out knees. They're buoyant, they're soft, and that gives them the ability to accelerate really quickly for a play or to balance themselves if somebody comes running towards them. Two more. Last one. Whew. All right, goblet reverse lunge. Feet hip width, and we're gonna step back hip width as well. Three, two, one, let's begin. Good. We started before the timer. I won't charge you for those reps. Those are free. Those are on me. <laughs> That's my bonus. <laughs> One more, and shake it out. All right, curl the press. So this one, I cued you last time, maybe feet a bit wider, especially if you have the heavier dumbbell like I do. Knees are soft, quads are tight, belly button drawn in, curl, press. Good. So side view, curl, press. Lower. Don't let that dumbbell go too far behind you. That high plank dumbbell pickup coming up for the last time. See so two more here. One more. Whew. All right, high plank. Let's have it on the outside of that left wrist. Remember, fingers wide and then grip onto the mat with your fingers. Don't let your wrists do all the work. Let those hands help out. Knees or toes, three, two, one. Tighten the glutes and go. Last couple of reps. One more. And come on up. Woo. Shake out those wrists. Great job, you. Grab a sip of water. Don't leave me yet. We're going to do a few stretches and then you can continue on with your day. All right, standing, shaking out the legs. Do what you got to do to shake out all the limbs. Grab a sip of water if you need it. All right. Let's get into a standing quadricep stretch to begin with. If you need something to hold on to, go for it. Mirror me, heel up to the bum, pull the knee back, squeeze the bum forward. Now heads up, grab onto your foot, may not be available to you, hey, okay, don't worry. Grab onto your pat leg, your shoe, or if you've heard me cue this before, a yoga tie or an old uh, neck tie or your bathrobe tie work wonderfully. So you would just loop it around your ankle and hold. I really recommend a yoga tie, or as I said, you can, Go to the thrift store and pick up an old necktie. 
and use that as well as a pair of yoga blocks to help build the ground up. Softness in this knee, remember we always want that knee, that softness. So it's not bent, it's not locked out, it's soft. All right, other side. Now we're gonna do some stretches for the hands and the forearms because we are holding on to that dumbbell for almost 40 minutes. <laughs> so that's a lot of work on both the hands and the forearms. So let's stretch it out and then we'll move into some uh, floor leg stretches. Release. All right, I'm gonna get rid of my um, elbow brace. This is for my tendonitis. I have elbow tendonitis. Been struggling with it for almost a year now, good times. Um, if you too struggle, I really recommend this. So you situate it just below the elbow joint and there's usually a pressure point in which you place that just on the lateral outside part of the elbow and tighten that up. And that's gonna take some of the load off when you grip. The other thing you can do with elbow tendonitis to help you out is whenever you pick up a dumbbell, scoop it. So don't pick it up like we normally do. That's gonna aggravate the elbow. Have the hand facing away and scoop it. It's amazing, it takes the pressure off. Okay, let's get into the fingers and the forearms. Spread the fingers wide. Turn the fingers towards the knees, press the hand down. Now sit back on your heels until you feel that bottom part of the palm start to lift off off your mat. Again, fingers are really spread, so we get into the fingers in addition to feeling this into the forearm. Hold here for a couple of breaths. And now let's just do circles. So you choose what direction, we're going four times. Emphasizing going outside, forward, side, and other direction for four. One more. All right, back to center. Now let's peel the hand with the tips of the fingers, the very last part to leave your mat. This is gonna feel so yummy for the fingers. Here we go, peel up, nice and slow. Press into the hands here. Oh, oh, does that feel good? No? Oh, <laughs> I don't know what you said. Here we go, mirror me. Fingertips pointed down. Now this is gonna now stretch the extensors in the forearm, which can be the pain in the butt muscle if you have tennis elbow. And then I want you to rotate the pinky away or the entire hand away from the midline of the body. Arm stays straight. You can sit back on your heels if that's irritating to the knees, have a seat on a chair or sit cross-legged. All right, shake it out, other side. So we just start with fingertips pointed down to the ground and then we just rotate the hand away. release. Come to one end of the mat, big toes together, open the knees up. Walk the hands to your left side, right hand on top of left. Press the hips back, stretching side of the body, lats. Let's go to the other side. Left hand on top of right. Now push that left hip away. Come on up. Bring the ankles and the knees aligned now. Take one hand and place it in the sacrum, just the small of your back. Inhale the other hand up and reach it. Extend, leading with the thumb. Release, take that hand, place it in the small of your back. Reach it, extend. Release, now both hands into the small of your back. And extend. Bring the elbows together, opening up the whole front of the body.
and release. Finishing off with a hamstring stretch, lying on the mat. Let's start with both knees bent. And then extend the left leg. If you have a yoga strap, you would put it around the top of the foot. Everybody else, grab onto your leg if that's available to you. And then lift your head up and slide the chin in so the back of the neck is long. Now you can have this knee that we're stretching, this leg that we're stretching, the knee can be bent a bit. And then if you're able to go 90 degrees and there's no shaking in the leg, feel free to straighten the other leg, pressing that right heel into the ground now to get a nice stretch in the front of the hip. Just breathe into that hamstring. Couple more breaths. Left foot to ground, right leg up. Yoga tie around the top of the foot or grab onto the back of the thigh if that's available. Leg can be straight, slightly bent, whatever feels best and wherever you can get that stretch in the hamstring. Big muscle in the back of that right thigh. Now making sure that back of the neck is still long and if you're at 90 degrees or better, and this right leg's not shaking, feel free to straighten your left leg, pressing that left heel into the ground to get that stretch in the front of the hip there. Couple more breaths. And bring the knees into the chest. If you shouldn't be flexing your spine too much, maybe right here is where you are at so that sacrum still stays imprinted in the mat. Otherwise, bring the knees right in and rock it side to side. So if your sacrum's on the mat, you can still do the rocks. And I'm just mentioning that because we do have a lot of people with osteoporosis and osteopenia that do the workouts. And I do my best during the workout to give you guys alternatives that are safe for you. It's the stretches that you really need to watch. Sometimes we do some stretches you shouldn't be doing. So when you do knees to chest, this is your modification. You're keeping that sacrum on the mat. And then you can add the rock if you like. All right, lying on your side, press yourself up, come into a seated position, cross the legs, sit up nice and tall, stack that vertebrae, ah, big smile on your face. Thank you so much for showing up, and I want you to thank yourself too because you showed up, which is really hard to do for home workouts. So you are a fighter. I respect you, and I am so proud that you allowed me into your life. Mwah! We'll see you next workout. All right, we're going to jump right into the warm-up. So let's start down on the ground. Wrists under shoulders, knees apart. No, we're not. I got to hit the timer. Fuck. <laughs>